Hi there, everybody. It's Thursday, May 28th, 2015, and this is another PlaySki dev update. I wanted to show you some of the stuff I've been working on for the past week or two since the last video. So I think where we left off last time was that I mentioned that I wanted to build some UI to make this editing functionality that I had added to game mode here uh, easier. And what you're seeing on screen right now is that there is a panel on the left that I can use to do a few things that would have had to have been invoked with the with the menu before and also through a keyboard shortcut so I can do stuff like that. But then um, there's also uh, it has the ability to have lists and stuff so I can load up different save states and it's populating this intelligently from the save state files, the game state files that it finds. I can spawn a new object so I can be like I want to spawn some new of these chest thing, or wait, is it doing it? Wait, what's going on? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can just pick what kind of object you want and spawn some of that. And then you can select objects. So all this stuff that I've done, you know, I can like just click in this menu here and, uh, you know, just add to or subtract from the selection, it will handle it, you know, if I delete that stuff, you know, so I can do all that, and that's cool. And then uh, I just added some buttons here for, you know, being able to toggle these visibility modes off and on, because previously you, they were just kind of keyboard shortcuts that you just had to know about. And then on the right here, we've got, um, I don't know how I feel about, yeah, I don't know why this chest has a, uh, has a, as a uh, a player character thing on it, but uh, yeah, and then this is the th this thing on the right is the object property editor thing, and f I can just like in the case of boolean properties, I can just toggle them on and off. Location locking is something that I realized that I needed. Um, you know, if you're like selecting different things, and you know you've got something like the background, and you don't want the background to move even if you accidentally clicked on it or drag or something, then that will safeguard it against that, but you can still select it. And then you can also turn stuff off, and then, but you know it still shows up here, so you can turn that back on. And you can also just straight up edit properties, so we can say let's, you know, let's edit that stuff, you know, let's change this, the art, the offset at which this thing's art draws and now we've got that weird stuff collision still terrible collision hasn't hasn't changed um, and then we can also if we just want to like reset an object back to its properties here then we can hit a button and do that too and so now this thing is kind of back to where it would be loaded from disk or rather from its class definition so yeah I think oh yeah and then also you can uh, you can select multiple objects and it will try its best to represent the common properties, like both of these objects, these two objects that I have selected are both visible, so it shows that common property. But for things like position, it says various, because it honestly doesn't know. And then we can actually set that to, we can set those both to the same value, and then they will be that same value. So that's cool. So now I've got just like a nice little level editor sweet kind of thing, you know, that I can use to build environment tiles and drag them around, and it's all live updated, and as you might remember from last time, you know, I can uh, be editing my, my game object code here, and all I have to do is just, you know, reload a state, a game state, and that will all, you know, that those new code changes will take effect. And uh, what else? Yeah, and this list on the right here of, of properties that I can edit is uh, populated from uh, a list that any object can have. So a game object has just sort of the base things that need to be. And it's also, it's one-to-one -one with the properties that get serialized. So this is the stuff that gets saved into J the JSON game state format on disk, and these are also what you can edit. Uh, so, yeah, and y if for a subclass of game object, you could take, you know, you could add to this serialized list. You could be like game object dot serialized plus some other stuff that's unique to a particular class, and you would be able to see, you know, just those properties represented, you know, those unique properties represented just for that object. 
So yeah, you might notice that um, the collision situation is still what it is. It is, which is to say, not good. Whoops. Oh, I did something to crash it. Um, yeah, the collision's still bad. <laughs> it's, um, and I've really not really done much of anything with that. I kind of set that aside. Um, hmm, and now I'm actually not sure what. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm not actually sh uh, uh, well. I, I set the collision stuff aside, and to focus on this art, on this edit UI stuff. And so now I've talked to a few more people about collision stuff, and I've got some good pointers. And so I think I know what I need to do now for a round two of the collision code. So that's what I'm going to be jumping into now. It's a little intimidating because I've, you know, had. I've done crappy takes on it like twice already and not been happy with them, but that also means that I've had some practice and I have a clear idea of what of what's good and not good in that space. So hopefully the next release and video and stuff that we do is going to is going to have function and collision and then that will really be the last major feature and I will just be working on my game at that point. I don't know what I'm going to do about these videos at that point, like, because I don't want to necessarily show off my game. But yes, we will be saying goodbye to this Chrono Test example game. And yeah, so... Um, you can get the, uh, the current build of the game on itch.io. Um, as well as the Project's Bitbucket page. I just put up a new version of it that's got these game mode editing things. I think uh, with Collision still broken, I, w I wouldn't necessarily recommend jumping in and trying to make something with PlaySki just yet, but it will be pretty soon, I think. So, yeah, in the meantime, you can, if you just want to make some artwork and stuff, it PlaySki remains functional on that basis. And... Yeah, uh, so I think that's about all I've got for now. Um, I'll be putting up a Patreon post f for patrons, and thank you to them, as always. Thank you for supporting me and helping me continue doing this thing. And that's all I've got for now, so thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely night or day or whatever it is where you are. Bye.